on that note, if we go on to the canaiolo, and yeah, well, we, we move to the canaiolo. So if, if you haven't finished the reserva, so now we look at, so you ha you've had the Sangiovese in the Chianti in its in cement, so it's very useful primary state. And now we're going to look at it. Do you want to have a glass when you try the canaiolo? We're looking at. Um, I can't ask you, sorry. I'm, no. On my tempting sheet, I've got chili ajolo next. See, so okay, so we, we've. So we switched it around a little bit because we actually feel that the canaiolo might be a nicer one. It's, it's my fault, I miss that. I just didn't want to make a mistake. <laughs> and, and also for everybody else. So it's the, the, the tannins are slightly lighter um, in, in the canaiolo, so it probably makes more sense to try the... So if you go to the yellow label now, so even though they're fine in the chile giolo, they're, they're lighter in the, in the canaiolo. Um, and there's a, it's a, a different, uh, the, the body is somewhat lighter than also than the chile giolo, so it's quite a nice one. And also the, the chile giolo goes into wood, so we thought it would be a nice continuation now to to go back to the, the unoaked and then we'll go on to the chile giolo. So this is um, a variety that you, again, you, you don't tend to see on its own, it's, it's, a, it's a supporting variety. So in the 80s it was very popular to, to instead of using canaiolo, to use merlot, which is a much easier variety to grow. Um, and, and a less tricky variety in terms of it's much, Merlot is much more disease resistant, so it, it, uh, it took the place of Canaiolo. And it's also much more familiar to in, international palates. Um, so Cabernet and Merlot in the 80s, they took away some of the indigenous varieties and uh, instead they used these international varieties which were much more familiar to international palates and they sold much better, they grew much more easily. Um, they had more aromatics, more uh, density of fruit, so they became much more successful. But now there's a, a big sort of sea, sea change. And in, in Chianti, in Chianti Classico, it becomes very interesting to see these the varieties um, on their own. Or I think we're one of the, the first estates to try. So um, so this is the, the Canaiolo. So it's 2019, so we go back to a very beautiful... Uh, oh, in the, wow. In your waiting room. So we opened our canaiolo yesterday and now it's coming through with a really wonderful um, spice note. So the, the, what they say about canaiolo as a variety different to Sangiovese, it has lower tannins, a little bit lighter in body. Um, it, it has a, a lovely lusciousness that supports like Merlot and this lovely spice character that isn't overwhelming, that isn't very dominant or strong. So uh, hopefully you're, you're finding the same at home. In terms of I'm finding that. it. I'm finding it really floral. I, 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 it might just be. Uh, <laughs> if I think about merlot and what that would would give to a, to a blend, this is that there's so much more florality to it than merlot was ever give, which is really interesting. I think. Yeah, the um, the name itself is probably comes from Rosa Canina. I don't know in English. Rosa, it's it's a kind of rose. Oh, great. Oh, great. Right. And uh, yeah, it's true, it's very floral, uh, fruity. It's um, uh, this wine that now they sometimes call in, um, uh, well, Reduzione in Italian, I don't know. But it's uh, like a de Soif, no? It's not necessarily full bodied, but it's very nice and fruity. And um, actually, because I was not really familiar also with this variety when I vinified them, so uh, the Ciliagiolo is the first that we I was convinced and we bottled straight away. The Canaioli took more time because uh, I was feeling it was lacking a little bit the center of palate. Then I went to all the wine fair tasting all the Canaiolo and when I realized that all the Canaiolo are like this I bottled them. But it's also is a nice character. It's, it's his personality. So yeah, it, it's characteristic. It's very floral, very nice, charming. I I'm interested to see what other people think if they um, if they're sort of Chianti fans or not Chianti fans. Whether actually this is much more approachable to them, or they they, they preferred the first two, or they actually this they're finding their feet with this wine. Is there is there anybody that finds this wine? Uh, Fiona, what do you think? Only you two. <laughs> <laughs> you hear my background sort of trumpeting noises. Um, it, yeah, it, it is very 
not what you expect, is it? And uh, but actually, re I mean, I think all the wines there's kind of real thread through the wines. They're they're very expressive, very lifted and fresh, and you know, delicious. And mm. and but this kind of gives off in a slightly different angle. It's you know, it's it hasn't got the acidity, obviously, or the tannin, but it's. It's a beautifully balanced wine, really lovely, really charming. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, because the other, yeah, that to me it's exactly that as well. And, and Andy, what about you with your, your wine background? Andy and I met at Vinopolis when I just started my wine career in 2004. So it's, and I don't think I've seen you since about that time, with Andy. So it's so nice to reconnect. But what yeah, do you think, Andy? Yeah, you too. Um, yeah, the, the, the two Chianti, particularly the Reserva, I mean, the reserve is quite, quite butch. Um, <laughs> it's, it's got some, you know, so there's power to its elbow. Um, and, and, and I think they're delicious. But the, uh, the Caniolo is, is um, quite, really quite different. Very, very different. Um, I honestly didn't know what to expect from Caniolo because there aren't that many bright no, bottlings absolutely. of it. And the, I'm thinking back to more than 20 years ago when I, when I did try um, some, 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 <laughs> some tank samples of Caniolo and it was part of a, part of a blending exercise. And uh, it, all, all that I can remember from that was that it, it was incredibly floral. And this, yeah. is, this, this has got that, that, that it, what was the expression florality. Thank you, I like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, it's, as Fiona says, it's just, it's really well um, integrated. It's, 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 a, it's a lovely wine, but it's a real charmer. The, 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 the Chiantis are, um, they have very food friendly wines. I can see that, that, that reserve has got quite a long life to it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. it's got some real structure. Um, uh, this is this this is um, this is much more immediate. This is this is um, yeah, van der Swaff, uh, more, more more friendly. Um, so you can see it's part Andy in the Chianti blend, right? It makes sense, yeah, yeah, Sandra. Yeah, you can no, see how can, it would can, fill it out. I, yeah, I, I can I can see how it would it would it would round out. It would take the place of Merlot. It's got that soft and softer side. Mm. To, so at the um, end, at the end of this tasting, it'd be really nice if you all would try according to what you like the most to make your own Chianti blend with with everything. So for now, yeah. we, we move on to our ciliegiolo. So ciliegiolo means cherry in Italian because the the it 